this week on Rockstar Superhero. Meeting the members of Polarity is ultimately the result of a very happy accident. In preparation for an interview with another well-known progressive rock band, I was listening to a song on YouTube, and as it happens, the songs end. Inevitably, the algorithm brings up a new song, often by the same artist. So I'm in the middle of writing my questions, and I hear this very cool intro, and a different sound pours into my headphones. It turns out that the algorithm has turned me on to Polarity. So I reached out to the band, and this interview is a culmination of those random moments. For that, I will say nothing more except welcome to the new sounds of accidental discovery. These are the very friendly members of Toronto's own Polarity, and you're listening to Rockstar Superhero. Guys, welcome to Rockstar Superhero. I'm so glad you are here. I have become an instant fan of Polarity. That's um, awesome. a, a really wonderful, well, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. a, a really wonderful surprise. You know, as I was saying before, we sort of officially roll in. I want the audience to know, you know, I was studying for another band I was interviewing and I'm sitting there listening to the music and it's great and it ends. And then a new song comes on and I've got my eyes closed and all of a sudden I hear this new melody, something that sounds a little bit different than the last band, actually quite a bit different. And the nice part was there was no video attached to it for me. It was strictly just what was in my headphones. And it was so well performed and so interesting musically and obviously quite a different vocalist. It was really something to behold. So fortunately for me, I begged the band and here they are. So yay me. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Ask and you shall us. receive, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I know this is going to be a little difficult today uh, to have, you know, a number of people here. So I will be careful. Um, I will try to just ask an individual and we'll kind of do a round table. Sure. If that's sure. cool. Cool. Yeah. So so maybe I'll, I'll start with Michael on this one simply because okay. uh, he was first to show up today is, you know, the band has been together about 13 years, at least from the information I'm finding on long line. Is that correct? Give or take. I, uh, the last few years have been a blur actually. So gotcha. yeah, gotcha. but yeah, more or less. Yeah. Okay. Pretty okay. long time, long okay. longevity for sure. Well, I'm curious, you know, again, one of the tenets of my show is really about the formation of the artist. And since I have three very different people here today, I'd love to know how each of you felt when you first connected with the other, because a band is a sum of parts. There's no such thing as, you know, the Michael show, the Sheldon show, the Jasmine show, it's polarity. Right. And, that's, yes. and that's a big deal. So I'd love to know sort of who started it first. So, you know, maybe again, Michael, maybe maybe you start this out for me. And, you know, what was the vibe you were getting from the other people as you met them? Um, and then we'll go around. Okay, I'll try to sum this up. It's, it's a long story, but okay. uh, I guess like all in a nutshell. So um, bef Jasmine and I are the original members. Gotcha. We met uh, online like a long time ago because at the time I was jamming with like my old buddies, like though we were in another band from high school. Um, and uh, we were looking around for a vocalist. And oddly enough, at the time, it was funny, like, I don't know if I told you, Jasmine, but um, Jason and I, the original guitar player, we were like, I wonder what it's like to have a, a female vocalist in the band, because we really dig this band named Flyleaf. We're like, yeah, I wonder, let's try it out. And then, you know, and just, I guess you put it onto the universe, and then we met Jasmine, we did uh, like a jam together, and I was like, oh my God, this girl can sing. <laughs> this is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. we just kind of went together. We, uh, we uh, then started jamming and then writing songs together, and things kind of just flowed from there um and of course like again like just it's been like you know a good journey but of course like you know certain members their journey ends because of like whatever reason like they have other things in their life and we've gone through like uh, quite a bit of change in uh, members over the years and actually um it's also when sheldon came in like he's actually one of actually the second newest member because <laughs> the newest member is our drummer okay. uh, julian but yeah like and then it's it's just a thing where when you meet new people just 
energies you just you clash like you you meld together because of the chemistry yeah. you get along through different uh, the ways you play music together the different bands that y'all listen to and it's just we just have a good vibe like after all this time so yeah that's really cool to me of course because i'm an outsider and just new to the polarity world my brain says well this is the classic lineup <laughs> cool. you know what i mean yeah. because this is what i've discovered this is what i've heard this is what i like you know what i mean so yeah how about you jasmine what's your take on on michael's memory yeah i mean i was you know a singer songwriter looking for a sort of alt heavy project and um satan and i connected online he sent me some riffs to um what became our song shadow so i came in with having written for that you know the lyrics and the melody for that and it all sort of just flowed organically and i had sort of had this you know polarity as a concept in my brain for a while because you know it's duality it's life it's the yeah. light and the dark the good and the evil the you know everything that we go through and it also represented the music that i wanted to make you know because I, I love heavy music but i also love light and ethereal music and i wanted to really blend the two so you know when things started to flow organically with satana and the members at the time it was sort of just you know this process of writing and um we we sort of are just one of those bands we just love to write music you know so we're always yeah. in our jam room writing new music even now you know what you've what you've heard rob is you know the three newest songs that we've written with our current lineup right. and um we have new ones that we just performed you know already at a show that we just played so you know it's just i think you know we need we need members that we all jive well with that don't have an ego that love to write music and that are committed to you know making good music their craft that is what is important to us some bands love the image some bands love the social media some bands you know but we really just love making music live and um that's that's our jam so that's who we look for yeah well it's it's working you know whatever you're doing you're figuring it out and and i like the fact too that you're walking this road in front of us a bit it, obviously the the internet has changed everything for for bands traditionally right in the past you know you had the foo fighters that was like probably the one band that sort of uh had growing pains in front of us in at, at do it with the old way of doing things, right? Bands mm -hmm. didn't usually switch out members too much. Mm -hmm. um, certainly not lead singers like Motley Crue did, as an example. Mm -hmm. And and nowadays, everybody's forming and growing and maturing in front of their audience. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, man. It's like I said a second ago. Um, this may be the newest iteration of the band. And welcome, Sheldon, because mm -hmm. I, I love that you're here. You obviously add a huge part to the sound. But I, yeah, I like this because it is the classic lineup to me. It's what I expect polarity to sound like. So I'm, I'm really, really excited to hear what comes next. I know we'll talk about that in a bit, but I'm, I'm sure. really stoked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank cool. you. And yeah. Sheldon, what, what was your take on like joining us? As yeah. A um, <laughs> so, um, I was looking for a band to join. Um, this was, I think, 2019 ish i was already in a few bands in uh well we're all from toronto um mm -hmm. so i was in a couple there and then uh, i was just looking for something that was kind of more me um in terms of my writing style in terms of the music i like and etc and i came i mean i would literally um i don't know if you guys have in the states but we have something called kijiji which is sort of like a local craigslist almost mm -hmm. um so i was looking on there and it's it's like a you know buy and sell type of thing but it also has looking for musicians mm. so i used to browse that all the time just seeing if there's anything interesting out there not only something to join but maybe put like i had my own ads up there looking for people like because i just wanted to make some something progressive right and i came across the ad for look polarity looking for guitar player and and then i they linked a couple of music videos and i'm like oh i can get into this like i like this i like the style i like what they're doing i like the the vocals are great the guitar work is cool um and maybe maybe it'll work. I don't know. I'll just reach out and see what happens. Because the ad was kind of it old. Worked. So I'm like, maybe they found someone else. I don't know, right? right? So I reached out. I'm like, if you're still hosting auditions, then I'd be glad. You know, I'd, I'd love to come out. And at that time, I was actually leaving for China, like for a vacation. And uh, he's like, yeah, don't worry. Michael was cool. He's like, don't worry. When you come back, we'll jam and stuff. I'm like, okay, awesome. So I got back. Uh, I got back. And then I think literally within the week or two, um, Michael and I met just the two of us. I didn't mm -hmm. even meet the rest of the band yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the two of us. 
he he asked me to learn a couple songs um, that they just released off Trilateral. Pretty much those those three there. Mm-hmm. So I learned them um, to the best of my ability, and then we jammed out. And I showed him some ideas. I know we just literally started making stuff. Actually, one of our songs we actually started writing that first day we met. Um, that's that we've written now, like you know what I mean. So it started uh, right from that day one, and then he's like, "Okay, like." And I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if they were looking at other guitar players. I didn't know if I fit. I didn't know any of that. So the mm-hmm. mic was just like, "Okay, next time we'll jam as a band. I'll call you out." So that yeah. happened, and then yeah, from then on, uh, twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, every until the pandemic. <laughs> essentially, we yeah. were jamming, making yeah. music, uh, and. Uh, yeah, it pretty much went from there. I mean, it was very seamless. Everyone was super cool, super nice. Um, I got to already like put in my own sort of style. Um, one of the songs that are coming out, like it was one of the first things I ever wrote with the band. Um, I don't know which one we're releasing next, Terra Firma, I think, right? I don't I know which one's t- t- Terra. I don't know, or Circle or Terra Firma. One of the, I mean, both, I'm but Terra so Firma. Yeah. Secret information right now. <laughs> when you yeah. listen to Terra <laughs> Firma. Uh, when you listen to Terra Firma, that very opening sort of hook that you hear, that was one of the first things I ever wrote with the band. And That's that was so like cool. day two of meeting them. You know what I mean? So yeah, uh, it's been quite a, it's been a great experience. So yeah, really cool. Everyone is. Been- and, and that's a huge part of our writing process, Rob, is making sure that every single member is an integral member. Like you said, it is five people coming together to make five sound waves, you know, and we are all equals in the band, but you have to be able to bring it. So when we were looking for Sheldon, it's what can he add as well? Yes, he has to be able yeah. to play our previous music and really jive well with Satana. That's why they jam together first as the guitars. They're that sort of string, you know, team there. Um, but when he was able to just come in and sort of seamlessly improvise, I mean, that's what Satana can do. And that's typically how we write. It's just sort of this organic flow. So when Sheldon was able to come in and do that, all, yeah. all the pieces were in place. Plus like that, you know, just a chill down to earth person. We're like, cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. Back. Yeah. I think, I, I think bands really know a fit when they see it and when they feel it. Right. I, it, I mean, again, from an outsider's perspective, for me, it was always about the feel. Yes, the guy had to have chops, all those things. He had to bring his skill set to the table. But it was something about the person, the feeling of the person, how they came in the room, the, the confidence, the the integrity, right? The way they feel as humans, that energy, that thing that comes off of them is, mm-hmm. is so vital because, I mean, again, going back to the origins as at least as a, a duo of you two, mm-hmm. you've been doing this for a really long time, and you can't you can't hurry perfection. Um, and at the same token, you're like, "Come on, world! I mean, catch up to us. We're we're fantastic." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But but I think adding Sheldon, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it closes that loop. It 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 gives it all the integrity it needed right it, it it makes you sound like again the polarity that i have greatly enjoyed so good congratulations on getting the right people thank together you. Yeah. thank yeah. you yeah you know um i think the hardest part about today is being in a world populated with something like youtube right there's Way too many bands. A lot of them are really good. Some, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff out there too, but there's a lot of great stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of great for a listener because, you know, I happen onto somebody like you, for example, that, that makes it a really wonderful experience. But for the band that's working and slaving to write songs and arrange things correctly and find the right vibe as a you know as a five piece you know i i imagine you guys have had to overcome a lot of frustrations because the industry for lack of a better way to put it sort of loses track of a lot of bands and i think somebody like you guys are so good that are you frustrated ever that it's like what's taking so long you know do you ever find yourself thinking like this is a this is too hard i mean i, I don't know how to answer that really to be honest it's just that it, it's a, it's a hustle it's yeah. it's a struggle but at the same time you just like you love it so much that you keep going Right, because you yeah. pour all your heart and your energy into something that you really love, and it's just like you just trust in the music, trust in the process, 
um, and you trust in the journey. Like, uh, I mean, like, yeah, like we've had our ups and downs, but of course it's like, just like life, like it's a journey and it's an, it's an adventure. Um, and because you always remember why you, I guess like when you come to those frustrations, you always have to kind of see why did you keep going? What's right. the reason that kept you going? What's the reason that why you were always showing up to jams, writing, picking up your guitar? Why are you going to all the shows? Why are you like constantly putting energy into music? It's because you love it that much. Yeah. And this yeah. is your expression. This is our self-expression. This is our, our vision that yeah. we just we just keep going. Yeah, yeah. And we're crazy. <laughs> that too. <laughs> there, there, there is a lot of crazy with musicians, right? I mean, look, when we're born, we're downloaded with we're downloaded with these talents. I'm not I'm not going to talk mm -hmm. about myself, but you're downloaded with those things. Those things have been born into you. Your DNA was designed mm -hmm. to be uh, a talent, to be a musician, to be a creative. And you, through time and effort and discovery, you've become the musicians you are. And, and I think that's extraordinary. But yeah, it takes it takes a lot. It it takes a lot to to fall into place. You know. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I think I think you know, like just to like to kind of address that point too, Rob. Like there definitely, absolutely is frustration, you know. And I think when we were sort of a younger band, you know, you see other bands sort of advancing, and you wonder, you know, why are they getting all this attention, and why are we not, you know? Yeah. Or you know, it's really hard to not compare yourself when it's so accessible through social media, through you know YouTube, through numbers. We're always compared by numbers, you know, yeah. like which is again to us kind of ridiculous because for us it's about the music. Why isn't I was very you know, disillusioned for a long time to think like, okay, the, the music really isn't what what sells. You know, a lot of the times it's a complete package or it's who you right. know. But I mean, dissolution of the ego, I think, is one of the reasons why you know human beings are here. You know, and like, to Satana's point, it's like you know we we really do it because we love it, and we don't want to look at music as a competition. You yeah, know, we want to yeah. look at it as an expression. And ultimately, you know, hopefully, like, if we just continue along the path, you know, like, look, you found us because, like, our music resonated with you. It's like, hopefully that frequency just continues to get out there. And then we do get the help and the support that we need to see bigger stages, to see bigger audiences, to, you know, to be able to put money in our pockets through making music, too. That would all be amazing. And, you know, yeah. just a patience of process and perseverance, I think. Yeah, no, that's a, that's incredibly well put. And and yeah, I mean, honestly, this is everybody's dilemma. This is everybody's journey. Unless you're hitting it out of the ballpark, you know, that, that occasional overnight sensation does happen. It, it just does, you know, the or the weird thing, like the Justin Bieber thing that, you know, just catches fire at the right time in the right place, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, we're all working our tails off and we're hoping we can just get, you know, to build an audience let alone the idea of actually making money is a fool's gambit you know what i mean it's it's hard to thrive in this world unless you give it over and you do it because you love it you know yeah, you put sure. it really well jasmine yeah you know mm -hmm. um i i have a i have a fun thing that i want to ask you and so so maybe all of you don't know this but i know michael does is is when you guys uh when i when i s request that a band connect with me right we set up a time to schedule these these interviews um i have a little questionnaire that i sent out and you know and one of the topics is are there any topics off limits and what what is really wonderful is his response was, we can talk about anything that's positive and fun. <laughs> and I'm not mocking this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love, love, love that response because, <laughs> because it's a, well, because it's a lovely sentiment and it shows the band leans towards humanity. It leans towards mm -hmm. hope. And, and I don't think I'm wrong here. I think, I think you guys have tremendous positive joy built up inside of you. You know, um, you're very clearly a very sort of spiritual leaning band. I don't want to say religious, but clearly you, know, you talk about energy and putting something good forward and, and being hopeful and all that. So like so many artists though, they're, they're afraid of the challenges that come from the human experience uh do you find that polarity perfect name again um <laughs> loves pushing really hard towards the positive or do you like to dip your toes in the the dark stuff some sometimes um, 
I will, I'll just speak quickly to that and then um, I'll open the floor to you guys. But I definitely think like lyrically, you know, um, I, I embrace the entire human experience. And I, and I do say to our audiences, you know, there are going to be days when you feel absolutely depressed, like you cannot get out of bed. And that is the human experience. We have to feel it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, if you go back in our catalog, I don't know how much you've listened. I've had people be like, are you okay? jazz like your lyrics are so dark you know like and there are some songs that are extremely dark you know because it is about this push and pull of you know this negative force that wants us to you know fail ultimately and sometimes we give into it and you know wants us to be depressed and wants us to not like start you know to reach our you know our higher potentials so i'm definitely not afraid of tackling it lyrically because i think you know in order to heal you have to feel and I think that, you know, music is a connector and music is meant for people to, you know, understand that there are others that are going through this human experience and having an equally as hard time with it. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that we're just like all 100% positive. We do embrace like the full spectrum. Um, and I would even say like, you know, sort of musically, like, yeah, the guys do tend to go to some darker spaces as well, just because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's how you kind of get it out. It's a cathartic release. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I don't know which one of you chimed in there. Was that Sheldon or was that Michael? Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to speak next? <laughs> uh, Sheldon, I guess, if you want to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, well, so, I mean, Michael is actually probably more better suited to answer, you know, because he's been with Jasmine and writing writing mm -hmm. together for a longer time. But even for me, um, uh, I take a lot of inspiration when I'm coming up with my parts um, through Jasmine's lyrics, like I'll, I'll actually look at the lyrics and, or I'll listen to them or, you know, if I remember certain words, certain aspects of certain things, and I'll try and musically kind of follow that. Um, uh, and one of the examples I can give is in a new song coming out that's called circle. Um, I try and with the notes that are my note choice, actually, if you look at it theoretically, you know, I'm, I'm a music theory nerd. There's a lot of, there's, there's notes that are going up and down at the same time. And they're kind of making a circle and like those kind of things, you know, when she's talking about dark stuff or light stuff, I try and invoke that kind of, whether it's a key change or anything like that. Um, that's just from a musical so point of view. Um, mm -hmm. not like a personal level or anything like that I mean, musical is personal to me, but, but, but like the, talking from a theory standpoint, that is something I definitely do follow and I do pay attention to. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm the newest out of the three here. So I feel like Michael is better yeah. to answer that. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I guess like also to Jasmine's point, uh, when she says she embraces everything, uh, and she puts that into words, I would do the same thing, except in my thing would be through like guitar, whereas something like where it's like something like very pretty or something very dark and snarly and aggressive, or maybe something just very chill, maybe something very upbeat and fun, whatever you feel like, whatever it, uh, you know, like it, you go through the motions. But of course, like it goes in tandem with, you know, like her kind of like with Sheldon, like I also try my best to write towards her lyrics, whatever the message we all kind of put towards. Right. Um, you know, musically speaking. So. Yeah. You know, it's interesting listening to you guys talk because you're so full of hope and joy. And I really like that because it's really rare. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, I mean, I have a lot of the same questions or different takes on the same question with bands as I talk, which is mostly about, you know, the darker parts of our soul, our humanity, our struggles in life, because of course life is hard for all of us there's mm -hmm. nobody's you know got the ticket punched nobody really knows what they're doing we're all trying to figure it out you know i mean i figure out how to be a dad in front of six <laughs> kids and i still suck at it you know what i mean and so i think i just think it's hard to be human so i it's funny because i wrote all these questions that are so like negative <laughs> and i'm talking to these three lovely people and i'm like how do i upend my stupidity in preparation for this oh, by <laughs> turning them on their head but you know I deal a lot in the mental health space. Um, I've had a I've had a great fortune to um, have some friends who are sort of uh, not captive to it, but are you know leaders in in that world. And because of it, I've met a lot of honestly very well known musicians who are, to be kind, very dark hearted, mm -hmm. and and they all suffer from the same thing, which is imposter syndrome. 
I don't belong here. I don't belong interviewing you. You don't belong, you know what I mean, on stage, mm-hmm. etc. And do you guys ever struggle with, I mean, look, you're humans, so of course you have hard times, but I just don't see you guys at least to this experience today that you're these sort of overly complex, broken humans who need <laughs> to expunge your souls or feelings of inadequacy. So, so like, I mean, how do you operate on a daily basis? Are you just, do you just tell yourself my energy precedes me? So I'm going to walk in the room kind or, you know, how do you, how do you live well, your day to days? You know, uh, if I want to, I guess, if I understand correctly, I guess, I, you know, like you have your up days, you have your down days. And I guess like the best thing, like to me anyways, like I wake up and I kind of start the day off always with a feeling of gratitude. Right. And always thank you. Like, and one of which would be like, thank you very much that I have polarity in my life. Thank you for all the members that I jam with and everyone. So and cool. um, yeah. And, and, you know, like regardless if I like feel happy or if I feel like absolute garbage, but just you just try to do your best to walk along like that line because every day it's like a battlefield like you know just um, like mentally and spiritually um and of course like even if there's times where i'm doing uh, like feeling like very negative you just try to maybe walk down the way of just balance right Mm -hmm. you need a like time to yourself or you know you want to or you need to talk to somebody that's usually the way that I've kind of just handled things like as of late. So, I mean, like I think I'm doing a good job. But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think slowing down too is good. I mean, I definitely want to ask Jasmine because you're front and center. You're the one kind of dealing with the audience and sort of expressing the band's POV. And, mm-hmm. and that has to be both exciting and challenging at times mm-hmm. because you have to put on a face at times you have to mm-hmm. perform. And you mentioned this online the other day that you felt out of sorts i read mm-hmm. i read all your stuff woman <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, so, yeah. so i so i'd love you to take take you know take us on a journey a bit about what that experience is like because you know everybody does feel differently it's not simple you know yeah yeah one thing that i like to kind of just you know kind of bring myself to you know kind of center myself to is you know on those hard days it's like why why am i an artist well it's to be authentic to myself you know because Mm -hmm. i've done the corporate world where i just wasn't myself and i knew that wasn't my path so i feel like you know in honoring the artist path it's like we do have to be authentic to our experiences and how we're feeling and again life isn't all just sunshines and like i'm a performer and i'm up on stage and people are glorifying what i'm doing right now because you know i'm up there and i'm singing it's like what they don't realize is you know that one percent you know moment where we're up there and we're having fun on stage like we worked our asses off for 99 percent of the time and also like while we're up there we're actually just like sweating you know every inch of our body off and like i'm just like wondering if i'm gonna like pass out while like holding the note you know and in that particular at that particular show again for whatever for whatever reason maybe it was just dusting the rust off you know like i just personally felt like we can do better as a band sheldon and i we have that in common um sheldon's very um picky when it comes to his performances because he has a high standard for his musical performance would you agree with me sheldon yeah no for i'm extremely picky like i have to if I'm yeah. not even like 99%, I'm not happy. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I get it. I'm human. I do make mistakes. It happens. But yeah. like yeah. I, I can pick out like every bar. I can point out to what yeah. note I messed up on like three yeah. years ago. You know what I mean? Like that kind yeah. of thing sticks with me. Sh- Sheldon will be doing a ridiculously fast <laughs> sweep, you know, uh, of like some like crazy arpeggio. And like there will be like one note in there that he's like, got to do that. Got to do it again. You know, and it's just like <laughs> yeah. nobody would hear it except for him. But um, yeah, like I just I, I hold us to a high standard when 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 we when we step out onto the stage you know and like talking you talking kind of specifically about like imposter syndrome it's interesting because i almost feel a little bit of the opposite you know i feel like we deserve to be on the bigger stages because we've hustled it out for 13 years you know so it's like you know like i don't feel the imposter syndrome i feel like we've put in the street cred you know like not a lot of bands you know have been 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 together for 13 years as an independent band you know and the only reason that we are together as an independent band and as as like a strong unit making the music that we make you know is because we do live like i'd like to say like kindness in our hearts you know like we're not out to you know like put any anybody down any of our members down um 
but yeah, I mean, sort of navigating, you know, people, you know, watching you when you're having a bad day or, you know, just even watching you online is very foreign to me because I am a private person by nature. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not the type of singer that's out there singing, you know, all the time, like just in my home or like if people are like, hey, can you sing something at this like random party that we're at? I'm like, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's like not what I'm doing right now. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, just being authentic. You know, mm -hmm. just really showing up with whatever that day is, is so important. It's like, yeah, like I feel like shit today. Like, you know, we all have those days or hopefully on the days when you have extra amazing energy and you're good, you can just, you know, blast it out there and people can pick up on it and, you know, feel better themselves too. Because again, we're all sort of these energy receivers and givers and, you know, we do always want to show up and give the best energy. Um, but the energy was weird in Canada that day anyway, because we weren't getting the internet and like things were just off. It just gotcha. was a weird day. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, that's there it is, too. Right. Sometimes days are weird and there's nothing mm -hmm. you can do. And it's not like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. The world woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Like yeah. everything is just whacked. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a skew. Mm -hmm. um, I have a feeling, too, I would be uh, buddies with Sheldon because. <laughs> If there's anything I do when I'm on stage is all I can imagine is everybody in the room is a drummer and they're oh, all yeah. and they're all going. Hmm. Oh yeah, I mean I all judge do that too, right? <laughs> like in, when I'm in the audience, I do that too. Like I'm just yeah. I'm the guy that's staring at the finger, and not it's not even like I want anyone to make a mistake. That's definitely not it. It's just right. It's just I appreciate watching guitar players, right? So <laughs> like I I would hope that if someone's out there that's a guitar player, because I did notice a couple of people like they would notice some of the stuff on the stage that like I did that was kind of fast and i saw them clap and stuff and that feels cool but yeah. i'm like i messed up some stuff too that doesn't feel cool you know what i mean so yeah yeah um, so and i know they were watching for both moments so, which is okay right like that's the whole duality of it so. yeah from out. that standpoint though you know what i always say like it's live music we exactly. are not pressing play like some exactly. you know bands unfortunately now yeah. it's like the backing track is almost their live show it's like us yeah. it's 100 percent mm -hmm. live if we mess up you're gonna hear it but at least it's real yeah it's I true. like that. I like I yeah. like having reality. You know what? You guys are such mentally healthy people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I really think that's what it is. I think there's just something, that energy, that feeling that comes off of you, that you put out in front of you is just one of spiritually healthy and wealthy. And, and that is a game changer because it's so rare that I use the word joy a lot in my world uh, because I would like to think that I try at least to be a joy filled person and and yeah going back to, to the the idea with other musicians uh, maybe not feeling that so much it's so refreshing to talk to individuals who actually have their relative poop together so so i'm trying not to swear too much my my mom's tired of if telling me to stop use the f word <laughs> my 80 year old mom is listening to these podcasts going oh that's awesome. rob they're great but uh you know hey, mom. Je jesus wouldn't be proud <laughs> um well so speaking of jesus you guys were talking about flyleaf earlier and um yeah. i hate i mean i'm just gonna say this very yeah clearly i oh, yeah. hate the comparison thing i hate the influence thing but everybody that listens to a podcast wants to know what if you know where did you start what why were you motivated what did you hear that turned you on right mm -hmm. and right. so instead of saying like oh you guys sound like you know flyleaf or lacy Sturm or you know because because nobody has any way to um yeah. take a woman's voice and mm -hmm. say like she just sounds like jasmine they've got to make mm -hmm. you sound like someone else mm -hmm. um would would each of you be open to sharing, you know, like a surprising influence, something that started your gun running a bit, you know, maybe okay. start with Sheldon on this one? Oh, man, I uh, <laughs> that's it's Instantly honestly, incredible. people wouldn't believe me. Uh, I got such a wide, wide variety of influences. Perfect. Like polarity included, um, like. I'm in full disclosure. I'm in about three bands right now. Oh, um, Polarity wow. is obviously my main one, but then I'm like in an eighties band or whatever. But from, you know, the Eagles was probably the reason I picked up guitar, awesome. uh, specifically Stuart Smith, who's the guitar player for the Eagles right now. Um, but then 
I love 90s pop, you know, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, anything that Matt Martin has been a writer on. Those awesome. so some of the best songwriting, in my opinion, when it comes to chord changes, key changes, harmonies. Then I go all the way to the other side to like Between the Buried and Me and like heavier bands like Meshuggah and Tool. Nice. Dream nice. Theater is my number one favorite band right now. Wow. So yeah, there you go. Like yeah. my right, guitar. Right now, or do you like the old Dream Theater? All Dream Theater. They can, for oh, me, wow. they, they're one of those bands that can do no wrong. I mean, I could criticize okay. them, but I don't. Um, but but that, that's for me the standard in terms of like guitar playing as, as a guitar player. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah. And then you can go to EDM. I, start, I like Dead Mouse, Zed, you know, a lot of that side of things too. So wow. a lot of my writing is kind of like a mesh of all that stuff, right? Where there's some cool, interesting things going on, but it's still kind of catchy. I try to make it catchy. I don't know if I right, succeed, right. but that's mm -hmm. the intention. So, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, it's all over the place, honestly. And then I also like jazz, like I'm talking Miles Davis and Louis Parker, uh, Charlie Parker, and you know, real jazz. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. like that, especially big band stuff. I'm, I'm a yeah. huge fan of swing. So oh, it, it's everywhere. I used to be a jazz drummer back in the day too. What? Guitar, so. That's why I have all these random, like, I'm, like, probably the worst person to ask that kind of thing, too. No. You can't pinpoint it, right? So. No, it's fascinating, yeah. Sheldon. I mean, and again, I mean, I'm, I, again, you and I are probably blood brothers here. But, <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I say heavy metal to gospel. Just yeah, all exactly. Just, all of it. It's yeah. just all of it. And I think that the beauty of that, and I'm not assuming any less of Jasmine and Michael, um, but the beauty of that is you're a fully formed musician. You're you're open to ideas because oh, I appreciate you it listen all. to everything. I appreciate it all. I really and you do. bring that to the band, and therefore, when they try an idea, it's going to sound like polarity, you know, with your version, your take on that style. But but you're bringing in these these ideas that can't have happened if you oh, hadn't exactly. touched exactly. on greatness here and there. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like if... Uh, who knows how the songs would turn out if I didn't miss sugar, right? Yeah, yeah, like Meshuggah and then, Miles. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's a wide, but I I do appreciate it all, and and I think like there's so many more similarities than people give credit for um, yeah. when it comes to different styles. Like if you listen to something like EDM and then you listen to metal, they both have these giant drops that everyone anticipates. Yep. You know what I mean? They have like there's so many common elements to these kind of things mm -hmm. that just as long as it gets the people moving, like they're succeeding, right? I think that's kind of like the goal. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but but you kind of appreciate that when you listen to it all. So yeah, it depends on the day, man. Like what I'm listening to at the moment. I'm I'm in I'm in love with this synth duo right now called Prism. These two okay. girls, I think, from Washington. I don't know, but like, like Washington State. Like I think so. The Prism, P R I Z M. Um, okay, they're these two. Wow, I love their production, unreal. But it's like no one would ever think I would listen to that, I'm and I, not that, that it matters down. to me. But. <laughs> Keep going. I'm gonna look them up. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah, okay. Really cool. I thought Washington, but I could be wrong. Hey, eh? like well, I'm, I'm not. I, I, you know, but it, just the fact that you turned me on to him is yeah. is pretty cool. Um, we'll go. We'll go. To, we'll go to Michael second. We'll end on Jasmine. How about you, Michael? Oof. Okay. Well, because uh, like Sheldon was saying that uh, he listens to just a wide good collection of music, um, I do as well. And in fact, like when I sometimes tell people, yeah, of course I listen to, like you know my metal, my rock, especially how I got started because my you know my dad was a very huge fan of the Beatles. I still is until today. And then the first album I ever listened to was Past Masters Volume 1. And then I was like, oh, okay, listening to this and listening to the Beach Boys and then the Stones, like, you know, the classic oldies. And then, of course, I'm just delving to, like, I love 80s music. Like, <laughs> I'm just, like, a sucker for that. Um, and then, of course, like, uh, getting into, like, the early 90s, I was like, oh, what's this thing called grunge? <laughs> you know, like, it's like me only in grade school. There was, like, half of the class listened to Green Day and the other half listened to Nirvana. And then I was like they're all actually fighting each other in grade four, grade five. And I'm like, Funny. this is all good. <laughs> and yeah. I just kind of just took things further and then started listening to, you know, all the classic eighties metals. Cause I love eighties metal solos. <laughs> oh, really? Like thrash type stuff. The, the fast, you know, like a, like a mega death type solo. Or I, that, but also even like contemporary pop hits that has that eighties wailing blues guitar. Right, and gotcha. stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, oh bro. <laughs> <laughs> bon Jovi, they have those awesome yeah, Bon Jovi solos like Def Leppard. Yeah, wow, so. there it is. Yeah, I love Def Leppard. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I think kind of just like, but it goes in different places. I mean, like, there's times when I do listen to jazz. There's times I listen to uh, Motown, and there's yeah. times I like right now I'm listening to like tribal chill 
down tempo psychedelic EDM. I don't even know what to say about it. It's called, We're yeah. gonna be best friends, man. All you guys. There's a reason <laughs> we haven't even got to Jasmine yet. Now I do want you to say something, Jasmine, but I have to yeah. say this. I think the reason I I know why I like Polarity now, <laughs> because you guys are so open minded. Musically, you're open minded. Yes, you're pursuing a style of music, you know, a genre, so to, so to speak, that fits, you know, what you're into, which is what I happen to be into. But those disparate, those wild careening influences are why I like the band, because mm -hmm. you have bits and pieces of the world in you. And that's rad, man. That's rad. Thank you, Robin. Like, honestly, like, if you were a fly on the wall in our jam room, you would truly see no ideas off the table. <laughs> we try so it all. Cool. Mm, yeah. You know, we try yeah. it all because, you know, that's how you create. We always say, like, what we're trying to do with our music is challenge the conventional norms of what it means to write popular music. Mm. So, you know, we don't want to just be a band that is following, you know, this specific three minutes and 30 seconds structure of, you know, this is what it means to do a verse, a chorus, a bridge, uh, you know what I mean? An outro yeah. bridge. So, you know, we really do like if sounds like, hey, I, I'm hearing this. It's like, let's hear it out. Play it. Let's try it again. Let's do that again. OK. And then Satana said, oh, but what if we try it this way? OK, cool. Let's try that. And then our you know bassist might be like, oh, but what if we try it this way? And then I'll say like, but I'm also hearing it this way. And we try everything every single way until we're like, we liked it best this way. Mm -hmm. So it really is a collaborative, like everybody's input and everybody's influence of all their different influences are in there. Yeah. yeah, and you're playing too. See, that's the thing a lot of people forget. They, I mean, yes, outsiders look at musicians and say, you're having just, you're doing nothing but fun. You, you know what I mean? And, and they're so wrong how much work goes into it. Uh -huh. But the joy of playing, right? That you're, you're sharing these, these bits and pieces. I don't even know where I'm going with this, but you're sharing <laughs> these moments together that are just so light and sweet and fun. And it's so much fun to turn around and to experience somebody taking your idea without ever having spoken it mm -hmm. and running with it, right? All of a sudden they go right there. There's a resolution in the music or there's a great ending that just happened to occur because everybody knew where the other guys were going. And that's so mm -hmm. cool, mm -hmm. you know? Wow. Wow. So before yeah. I ask the, the next and most important question, I, I do want to know what, what floats your boat, Jasmine? Yeah. I mean, when I was younger, I always, you know, I, I really always loved singing as a young girl. Like I say, like I, I probably was singing with like the umbilical cord, you know, like in utero or something. Like I just came out like humming and singing. My parents said like, you were a noisemaker from the time you were born, you know? Right. Um, and growing up, it was like, you know, the Disney princesses. I love big, beautiful, smooth voices. It was Phantom of the Opera. It was, you know, Les Miserables. It was, you know, musical theater. And then probably, yeah, like around like the 90s and the early 2000s, when I really got introduced, Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill came out, you know, um, Our Lady Peace, big Canadian band that was, you know, amazing, amazing songwriters, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, really got into Deftones and Chevelle. And like, so I started getting opened up to like this whole other angsty side this whole other harder genre of music that was really speaking to my soul and where i was at the time you know the depression i was going through the whatever like the you know spiritual awakening the everything like when your eyes are open and different things and you know you just need different outlets it was like this 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 harder music was really really something that i was just putting on repeat and i just couldn't get enough of so those definitely influenced me to, you know, say, hey, you know what, instead of, you know, going through the musical theater, which I kind of initially thought I was going to do, it was like, boom, you want to be in a band? Like somebody was wearing a Deftones t-shirt and I was like, you could just do that. You could just start a band, you know, and, <laughs> and then we did, yeah. you know, and then yeah. from that moment on, I, I, I didn't look back. But I mean, I'm, I'm like the guys, like I listen to everything. You'll hear me listening to, you know, very soft acoustic -y folk stuff to, to different types of yeah electronic music to crazy heavy music just all depending on the mood the day whatever you're vibing right yeah. that's the beauty of music <laughs> yeah that is the beauty of music i mean and again the beauty of why you guys are here because i fell in love with something i heard and it was magical and it was a moment for me and yeah. i could even sense through the photographs not ever having talked to you that okay this is a band i think i like you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel yeah. like I like these people. And then sure enough, you show up and you're just so kind and cool and interesting and fun. And and yeah, I mean, you guys deserve the things. You deserve what's coming because I think something's coming for you. 
Thank and a good you. It was all man. You've you've been you're you're awesome. Oh, I was, I've, been, I've been looking. I feel to like this. I'm high today. I mean, I, I'm <laughs> telling you. I mean, well, because again, I I typically structure my questions around these sort of darker hearted experiences. I deal a lot in the metal space, mm-hmm. um, you know, and and of course, uh, metal musicians tend to be the funniest, most intriguing, int- you know, to talk to. They're a ton of fun. But there's a lot of crap that they bring to the table. You know, I, I interviewed a band the other day who I, who shall remain uh, nameless. Yeah. Um, but they they uh, were just so depressing. Holy <laughs> crap. It was just so depressing. And I like I like the guys so much. And I just wanted to say, like, can you just like <laughs> You know, like, like you're, you know, your dad isn't dying of cancer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like it, but it felt like everything was leading towards, yeah. And it's just so hard. And I'm like, uh-huh. mm, like <laughs> that's gotta be a tough life. You know, yeah. um, look, uh, let's get back on to the main topic, why you're here. Uh, one, because I invited you, but I, I want to <laughs> help you promote this. You know, you guys have these live off the floor videos you've been doing. Um, and you have some, from what I've heard, coming up. Um, is is the place called Jacasa? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. So yes. you, Jacasa you Studio. Okay. Yeah. So you recorded uh, a song at Jacasa Studio, and I think you have a few more coming up, if, yeah. if I believe. So mm-hmm. I was hoping we could kind of talk about them to kind of turn people on to, you know, what's coming from Polarity. Okay. Um, sure, I guess. So. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> okay, we have. So we did release our the first one, which, as you know, you've uh, discovered us through is yeah. uh, destruction of memory. Yep. yep. Um, and then so we have like two other new ones that we we all recorded three uh, on the studio. Okay. Going to be you know, releasing them, you know, within time and uh, in space of each other, and you know, like uh, just to kind of give people a taste of like this is us, especially after being away for uh, like two years, <laughs> like for a long yeah. time. Yeah. So you know, like we have like Sheldon is new, but also we have a really new member, which our drummer, and it's like you know, here is us. We're back and we're stronger than ever. And then it's like here's something that we recorded live in the studio. But of course, it, like I said, live off the floor. It's just what you're hearing is us. Like, yeah. you know, just like yeah. we just go through, we bang it out and it's, it's organic, it's live, nothing, no um, like production behind it. Just no like, clicks, no metronome, nothing. No, it's not really, there's no metronome? No. Nope. Well, you know, see, you know, as a drummer, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed because the, it does feel, and I'm sorry for interrupting you, but no it does feel really 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 well uh rehearsed and and, and I, that I guess, it is Rob. i guess it, <laughs> yeah, it is yeah, it i is. guess yeah. it has to be that because you're not relying on backing tracks and a click to save you you have one shot at it and that one shot is rather impressive so yeah and what we did is we did basically three so we did three songs and we did three takes of each song because okay. you know, I mean, the guys could probably play all day and give it their best performance, but as a vocalist, yeah, you know, you can't be singing hard for more than a good, you know, two and a half, you know, three, especially depending on the style of music you're singing. It's like your voice gets tired, you know. It's yeah. part of it's part of your human instrument. So, you know, we did we jam, you know, pretty hard when we're in our jam room. We are practicing. Yes, there's some some goofing off in between, but I mean, we're not one of those bands. Like I've been in bands where it's like it feels like you're meeting more than you're making music, or you're you know you're fighting, or you know like just different yeah. dynamics of different bands happen where it's like, aren't we supposed to actually be like actually like making music? You know, so <laughs> thank goodness, you know, with polarity, that's what we do. You know, we really do rehearse it, and um, yeah, so it really is just us. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys don't sound like you're at odds. You know, I mean, I think that's again another one of those things about this energy preceding you. You feel like you're a, a cohesive unit. You feel like you're mm-hmm. together. And mm-hmm. yeah, and hearing that live off the floor track was really really fascinating to me because again, it was so well rehearsed and it felt genuine. And mm-hmm. and and to be honest, I, I I'm telling you Jasmine, I don't listen to lyrics, man. I don't. <laughs> I'm a drummer. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, it's, I, I'll apologize. I'm a rhythm guy. I'm listening for arrangements. I'm listening for totally tonal shift. 
I'm listening yeah. for mood and I'm listening yeah. to that guy mess up. I'm waiting <laughs> for him to mess up. And, yeah. and, and so when I finally discover like, oh, okay, I really like this band. I'll go back and listen it two or three times. And mm -hmm. that's when I start paying attention to the story behind it. And the beautiful mm -hmm. thing with you guys is even when the story is somewhat complex and dark, as you had mentioned earlier, you have, that I know I'm just blowing smoke now, but you do, you have that thing that just happens that makes you go, yeah, but it's a story. And, and I really, I really dig that about you guys. I, I want the world to, to see what I'm seeing, you know, because I, 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 there's, it's not just like you're capable of being something mm -hmm. you, you just like most great bands you're lost in the haze of so many great bands and you need those leg ups you need what i say it all the time you need a champion and i'm here to be your champion appreciate Yay! That. thank you rob <laughs> we, yeah, we really, really appreciate, we appreciate that. that you know because yeah, no. you know what your good energy radiating a uh, radiating out you know even the comment that you left for us it's like that 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 makes a big difference you know the mm -hmm. fact that you want to help to you know get us out there it really it is one person at a time until there's that tipping point and i always right. say in the music industry you know you make no money until you make a lot of money Right. Like yeah. there is that option. It's like the bands that are successful are very successful. Mm -hmm. Artists are some of the wealthiest people in the world. You know, there is that option. That potential is out there. But until then, mm -hmm. it's like pushing a snowball up a hill, you know, and there's yeah. times when, you know, you're pushing it and it just gets heavier because the, the snow starts accumulating and then you're just like shaking. And you're like, oh, my gosh, are we going to be able to make it through this next little mm -hmm. portion? Because it's just so crazy being in a band trying to live our own lives have our existences, you know, and then just always committing to this project that takes time, that takes effort, that takes energy, that takes coordination, that takes other types of artistic, you know, endeavors, whether it's your show posters or your posters or your other media, your content, you know, but, you know, luckily there are those moments where, you know, you get to the top of that hill, you crest, and then you get to push that snowball over and you get to go, oh, oh, this, this is why we do it because we're making a difference because people like you are finding us and giving us that extra boost of good energy to be like, keep doing what you're doing. It's working. You know, it yeah. means the world yeah. to us. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I just really genuinely, obviously, I mean, come on. <laughs> I, you don't owe me anything, but I, yeah, I, you know, it's genuine. And so, yeah, I, I want nothing for the best for you, but, um, let me ask one final thing before you go, um, because sure. I know this has been sort of a ca very casual conversation, is, you know, with everything you've achieved so far, and obviously the direction you're heading is up, we know this, we agree on this, and this mm -hmm. show, for as little as I probably offer, at least I can offer my own piece to that, but what's, you know, what's next? I, I'm not talking about ambition here, but, but you know, what what do you believe is is the next step for polarity you know what are you seeking and and maybe somebody who's listening or even myself we can help you get to that you know get on the bigger cog so to speak mm. yeah um i guess yeah I just that uh, point it's like you know we want the opportunities uh, that i know that we are capable of that we deserve um and it's like you know it's nothing better would just to see like a show posters like deftones chevelle and opening up polarity it's like yeah. oh my god this is awesome yeah you know, like to see like a lineup of uh, fans like just like you know someone was like hey i discovered you as like a polarity t-shirt it's like oh cool and then you know when we're getting the you know to meet them hang out and we all become like good friends afterwards it's yeah. like oh this is amazing and just yeah. to travel the world and just like you see all different bands when they post on i know when i because i'm on uh instagram all the time and mm -hmm. you see like bands like they have these like you know the the big stage in the back and then they're taking like their i guess their <laughs> groupies or let's say they're behind and they're basically here's the venues and just traveling the world it's like this is an adventure it's like basically yeah. just to, to you know to to evolve our ongoing adventure you yeah. know to bigger heights yeah yeah yeah, yeah. man i'm telling you yeah <laughs> I guess if you guys want to, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That yeah, sure. and I, I think even like, even if we, you know, sort of put a magnifying glass on that, like sort of narrow it down, like mm -hmm. even just put out more songs, you know, we are always writing. And that's something mm -hmm. that I noticed when I joined the band. Like there's never a shortage of, a shortage of ideas. Mm -hmm. Um and Jasmine mentioned this, right? Like we'll try everything in, in every way, but even completed songs that we have, getting those recorded, getting an album mm -hmm. out, 
um, mm -hmm. doing all of that, you know, actually doing the work more that, you know, what these great bands are doing, putting out CDs, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that as well is definitely on the horizon. Um, yeah. As far as yeah. what's next. And we then, can. you know, it's always the right record, promote, tour, whatever it is, like that kind yeah. of cycle. Cause, cause I, th there is, um, merit in doing it that way. And I mm -hmm. think that's like this sort of formula that, works for the most part and then we got just got to adapt it to how we do our thing right yeah. so we're not yeah. feeling any pressure so to speak we're not i don't think we've ever been that kind of band where mm -hmm. it's like okay we have to get this out because of this it's just okay we do what comes natural for us and that's you know and organically as things evolve that's how that's how it'll go right so mm -hmm. i mean yeah. we're fortunate enough for you to reach out and like i saw mm -hmm. a youtube comment on, at first i'm like okay is this spam or not that's the first thing that goes <laughs> to my head but, but then always like i'll always look into it and i'll be like okay is this like like if this is a real person we better respond right because it's like we yeah, have yeah. the opportunity so yes of course. um that's where our level of jaded shows is this spam yeah. is this yeah. somebody well, yanking our chain live, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no. i get it all the time i'm exactly. like every once in a while i get yeah. an email that blows my socks off right and it's always when i'm driving and i'm like you know and you're not i'm not supposed to be reading the phone right <laughs> but but i'm driving all of a sudden here ding so i you know i reach over and i am doing the whole like uh-huh uh-huh right and 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 now i see some Something like um, record label announcement thing, and I'm like, oh, you know. So then I have to pull over and read it, and it's spam every Aww. time, yeah. you know. <laughs> so yeah, I know what you're saying. You, um, you kind of yeah, you kind of you kind of wonder, and you get used to it sometimes as a, as an independent fan. But just to sort of tie in both of you know Satana's and Sheldon's answers, I I definitely think what's next for us is new like more new music, you know, continuing to evolve in the in like now the unit of five that we are like we want to write. Like, yeah, like an album, like we, we do want to put out a bunch of new music mm -hmm. and we want the right people that can put us on the right shows, you know, because mm -hmm. that's what we work hard for. That is honestly, if there's one thing I can say, like we're actually good at, it is bringing our live music. If somebody said perform tomorrow for this big band, we could do it because that's just what we do. You know, we right. jam together in a room, you know, we can bring it live. So it's like to get that those people that can put us on those tours and give us that bigger exposure. It's a double edged sword right now because, you know, they don't want to do that because they don't see that you don't have the big social media numbers. But right. back in the day, you grew your audience by playing live to big people, to a lot of people. Right. So it's yeah. like if, if we could kind of go back to like the 80s where they just like <laughs> they like decide that, you know, you're good enough to play for this big audience. I know that we could, you know, lasso them in and uh, welcome them into our world more. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to absolutely keep writing and keep doing our thing here. And we'd love to make it to the state soon. We have a lot of fans down there. So much love to all of our American fans. Uh, we definitely want to cross the border soon and uh, play for all of you guys. And once again, Rob, thank you so much for reaching out to us and yeah. giving us all your positive energy that you've been giving us tonight.